Okay, you ready? Um, yeah. Yeah. Three, two, one. <laughs> Wait, what do we do now? I, I, I don't know. It was so in sync. We don't. Well, we, we normally did it twice, but that's because we were sitting like 100 miles apart. I, I, I'm not very good at geography. Now? Hmm? How much are we sitting apart now? Oh, that's a good question. Because it needs to be safe. Because things aren't back to normal yet. It needs to be two meters. At least. At least. If not more. This is absolutely terrifying watching this coming towards me. Keep going. Uh, uh, <laughs> Hey! <laughs> Two <laughs> meters and twenty. Perfect. Ow. Did you just lose a finger? No, just a bit of pain, but that's okay. Excellent. Good. Because so that's, that's your slide clicker hand. Where's my slide clicker? It's uh, down there. It there is. you go. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Should we talk about the web? Let's talk about the web. Come on. Well, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually web adjacent with this one because I want to talk about this. Yeah, mate. You realize in CSS you can have font sizes bigger I than twelve. I just installed the web font, <laughs> and something must have gone wrong. This is what you get. Okay. So People... it's, hang on. It's den den. Oh, now this there is controversial. This is exactly. Why I put it there and didn't say it myself because you wanted me to make the mistake. Yeah, and get all the YouTube. No, comments. you're wrong, not me. But so because it, it, right, it's Deno or Dino. That much is good. It's one of the two. And you know what I did? I went back to this presentation. You know what this is? Or who this is rather? This is uh, Mr. Dino, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Jeremy Dino. <laughs> so it's Ryan Dahl. Yep. yep. Ry on GitHub. Yep. Originally the creator of Node, and now also the creator of the thing. Yep. And this is JSConf 2018, where he announced it, and I was in the audience, and I was like, ooh. Um, and he called it Deno. Oh, well, there you go. That's, and so, that's surely case closed. And I smugly tweeted, just in case, here's proof it's called Deno, everyone. Oh, well, there you go. And then no. Deno tweeted at me, saying, like, uh, actually, Ryan is wrong. <laughs> so, who's behind that account now? Apparently, he got convinced everyone it should be called Dino. And so it's Dino. The canonical pronunciation is Dino. It's like GIF. Just GIF so everyone knows, it. I will probably get this wrong in this episode. I will probably mm -hmm. even use both interchangeably. It's both the same. We're talking about the thing. Dino, the Dino. thing that I want to talk about. So what is Dino? Well, it's that. It's, it is basically Node. It's, it's a JavaScript runtime, but it has TypeScript. I think that's what most people already know. Instead of running JavaScript, it can also run TypeScript. It's mm -hmm. actually TypeScript first. And has a bunch of very interesting, not necessarily new takes, but just a combination of things into one, which is a different take on package management, security, web compatibility. And you know, I thought, just give it a little, little roundup, because I've been playing with it. I've been liking it. It's really good to, because I've, I've used it once in passing, but I don't know a lot about it. So, so I'm going to learn expert. a lot here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I put it on my CV now. Um, but it's, we've not had a lot of competition in this space. Like there was 100 years ago, there was the server-side JavaScript stuff that Netscape did. And then there was nothing. I didn't know that one. Oh, yeah. yeah you're younger than me. Uh, this is a long, long time ago. And then there was Node. And now there's Deno. So it's like this, and so much had changed between the old Netscape thing and uh, and, and Node. So it's interesting to see what like what's the, the you know what have they learned? What have they changed? What have they learned from Node and gone? And you know what I think they have done. The talk from Ryan Dahl from JSConf 2018 actually is explicitly was a talk. Ten things I learned or ten mistakes I did in Node, something like that. Um, and he kind of used the talk to then lead into Dino. Um, but the mistakes he talks about are really interesting, so we're going to link to that. All right. Um, all but right. I just want to basically just look at Dino by itself and just talk about a bunch of things. So this is, don't be intimidated <laughs> by this. Oh, perfect. Yeah, it's great. This, this is from there we go. their website. You don't need to know this, but there's a couple of interesting things in here that I want to extract. The one thing is Dino is written in Rust. Ah. That by itself doesn't mean much immediately, although I have no experience at actually contributing to Dino, like hacking around in the actual engine. Quite doable. So you, you just dropped that in there. You've, you're now a. No, I, 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 I just hacked it you, on. You corrected a spell, spelling mistake. Not even that. Me, right? Not, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even. Ha I don't even have a commit. Oh, but right, I, okay. I added a sum function, a global. Oh, okay. Oh, and that well, was that was easy enough. And you know that, that, that is saying something. I was actually like I have. 
some, I, I know some Rust. I'm far from an expert. But the cool thing is the build system is super easy. And if you've ever tried to build V8 or something like that, you know that that, that is not easy. Yeah. And the nice thing is they extract it all away. It just builds. Um, and the other thing that I want to point out, it uses V8. So it's our trusty V8 engine running the JavaScript. And the other thing that's just, you don't really need to know that, but I found it interesting. In, in Node, most of the file system functions are direct bindings to C++ backed functions, which mm -hmm. is where you often see native function when you see a stack trace or something. In Dino, you have exactly two native functions, which are just able to send buffers to the isolate background. And so you, you always have to communicate through these two functions. It has is, that, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a good thing, because the oh, okay. th that's the only way to get out of the, the V8 sandbox only through these two functions. So the audit surface is very small. Unless and that function is a vowel. <laughs> you know, what, so what, what are we talking here? How, how are those I think, working? I think it is interesting that if, if something goes wrong, it has to go through one of these functions. You mm -hmm. only have to see, I'm not an expert on this, so I'm, I probably shouldn't be talking this. I just found it interesting that in contrast to Node, where loads of things call directly into C++, you only have two functions that call into C++ here. And those are these two functions for receiving buffers and sending buffers. Oh, OK. And that's right. quite interesting. But that's not really interesting in terms of us web developers. So I want to talk a bit more about the first thing that's quite interesting is the standard library. Um, you know, I know we, you have an extensive standard library. And so does Dino, but you have to import it. It's not just that. You have to import it as a URL. And the, the interesting thing is, that that's an actual URL. Like if you type in this URL into your browser, you will see TypeScript code appear. Okay. Because I, I, yeah, if you're leaving Node behind, I guess you're also leaving npm behind. Yes. Is that true? Yes. Pretty much. So it's th there is actually no real package manager in Dino because it's like you know what we're just going to use the thing that JavaScript on the web uses. You just import modules. And that works really well. So on the one hand, you would see the URL is versioned. So you import yep. a specific version of the standard library, which is nice because it decouples the standard library from the engine, mm -hmm. which in Node is not the case. You, you always require FS. And that is the FS that came with your Node version. So in this case, Dino, the engine, can evolve without the standard library evolving, which is also, I think, a benefit for backwards compatibility. You import a specific version. But also, there's obviously a place to publish User modules. You say obviously. Didn't well, know you, that. Yeah, well, you have to. You you want to be able to to import code, right? And well, so can you not just put this on your own web server. You can, and that's what I find really interesting. They have this deno.land slash x where you can go on and publish your own code under a nice memorable URL. But as I said, it's a normal request, a normal URL. So you can actually, in fact, also <laughs> point straight to GitHub. Oh, look at that! Or point to your own web server. And that's actually kind of nice. It, it kind of has this decentralized thing built in that you don't rely on the central registry to keep all the code that you depend on. So what's the offline story for this, then? That's a good question, because obviously, you, you want to run a script, and you do it like this. You just do deno run and your script. Yep. And on the first run, that will download all these files via an actual request, and then look at dependencies and do that. And then it will never do it again, which obviously sometimes is a problem. I mean, if the URL is versioned, you would hope it's kind of immutable, and the same version should not deliver different code in the future. So it's not paying attention to the caching headers specifically of the request. It's, it I is don't just like... think it is, okay, but okay. I'm actually not 100% sure. But Dino has a command R, command F5, whatever, built in by passing a reload flag, and then it will actually reload everything. So in case you do get stuck, you can reload. But also, it is. You know, if you want to develop on a flight without Wi-Fi, just make sure you run it once before, and then you're pretty good to go. So that's my that's my thinking pose. So uh, how does dynamic importing fit into this? Because that's that's one of those things of like you're not just going to be able to say, uh, you know, load once, and then go on your flight or remember flights. But then, because if it's a dynamic import, you do all that, and then you know you hit a runtime import, and so now it fails. Dynamic imports work. Good. Excellent. <laughs> um, I think for the offline story, you would have to have them loaded once for them to work offline. I see. OK. Um, th I think it's, that, that's all there is to it. I think it's, it's, a very, it's, a, it's a system with very simple rules, but there will be drawbacks. At the same time, how often do we really run into this, I'm developing offline case? Well, I would say it's quite rare to have a, 
when you're running a, a server style app, having a dynamic import of a module is pretty rare. Like yeah. Your dynamic imports are more likely to be JSON or something yeah. like, like well, you know, something that is local anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's yeah. For server side, I think it it doesn't happen that often, and we will actually yeah. see a bit more that Dino is actually going all in on this. Like it should probably mostly be static imports anyway. Like I feel like dynamic imports are going to be rare in yeah. this context, that but like they time. do work. I did try it, and that's that's good. All right. Um, you can even run scripts that are non-local. So for example, the standard library does provide a file server, something that you know in Node you often have to like either write or npm install. Like you can just run the URL. Nice. And it will download the script and run it and all as well. You see that um, dash dash allow net is a flag. Yes. Because by default you can't just access your network from a script. And actually that's a whole security story here in Dino that I want to talk about a bit a bit more. Because the security story around Node and NPM is sort of terrifying. Yes. Have you heard of post install scripts? Uh, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So as we have no NPM or anything at all, there is no such thing. But even this has, even just reading files, accessing your network, opening a server has a permission story. So for example, here we use the deno global, which has the couple of functions that haven't found a web-compatible home. I'm going to talk about that a bit later. But all reading right, files, right. you do via the deno global. Um, and it's all promise-based, also great promises now. that It's it, it's kind of nice sometimes to start from scratch, isn't it? Yeah, you can like, catch up on the developments. Um, and if you run this script in, in Dino, it will fail and tell you, well, or it will throw, rather saying, like, you don't have permission to read files. Please run me again. Such a nice default. It like, is. It's just and by so, running a, like npm whatever, it's, it can read anything on your file system. And... Exactly. So let's drill into that a little bit more because you know, I can you know I can add allow read and it will be fine. But this is obviously a bit binary. It's a yeah. bit all or nothing. Oh, you're going to tell me it's scoped. So what if I did this? Yes. Like I have a legit reason to read a file. So a person would be quite keen to give me allow read, but then I use my permissions. I abuse my permissions and read my Bitcoin wallet, which I don't <laughs> actually have, but I thought that might. <laughs> tied to monetary values, people actually care. <laughs> um, so if I run it like this, it would work, and that would be bad. And what you can do is you can actually supply this flag multiple times for every individual file that this script should be allowed to read. So you can actually give very granular permissions. Can, it, script. can it be for like a whole di directory? Or? I would hope so. Yeah, I actually haven't so. tried it. But even then, I would say like this doesn't necessarily scale, because sometimes you don't know up front which files you might want to read, or the script can potentially even tell you. And this is where something really interesting comes in, I think, is that you can even dynamically request permissions. Oh, like what we do in the browser, then? Pretty much. Yeah. It is very. And that, I think, is a story that you see all throughout Dino, is that they really took the web model or many, and learned many, many things from the web, because you know the web has really taken their security quite seriously and lots of other things that they want to be secure by default and still be able to run random sites that you don't trust. Like mm. That's a pretty hard, hard place to start, and we have found a way to make that kind of work. Um, and so if you do this, you, you, you def there is these request objects, and you pass it to Dino permission request. And that will manifest as a prompt on the CLI, like where it goes, hey, the script wants to do the thing. Do you want to permit to do the thing, or would you rather not? That's very good. I, I would say one thing, like the browser gets away with, the browser has special UI for permissions. But I guess we don't really have the equivalent in Deno, because no. a Deno program could output there. I think this is an escape hatch when you don't yeah. know which file, or you just it just doesn't scale with the amount of files you want to request. I'm not quite sure, but I like that there is a way. It's mm. not nice, not the most beautiful way necessarily. Maybe there will be better ways in the future. Maybe at some point in the future, we can actually forward this permission request to the browser or something, give it a nice common UI. Who knows? Mm. But I mean, in that sense, it's early days for Dino. It's got announced in late 2018, I think. Yeah. Um, it's gotten a good amount of attention recently, but they're still, I think even their 1.0 is not that old. So they're still early days and iterating on all these things. And they're going all in on the web APIs as well. So like the, the streams or what WG yeah, yeah. streams. Hold on to that. Oh, OK, yeah, yeah, OK. Yeah, yeah. Zip. Speaking of, all right. let's talk about a couple of global objects that are available in Dino. And I try to order them 
by increasing amount of surprised face <laughs> okay. that I pulled. Yeah, I'm not surprised at global list. It's a web standard. It's, it's, a, it's a, a JavaScript, JavaScript standard, yeah. right? OK, not surprised. OK, uh, hang on. Is WebAssembly in Node as well? Because you can do WebAssembly in Node. So this, this is a global in Node as well. No surprise face. No. And that's a web standard. Right, so we're talking a little bit more surprise now, because Node would have has an, its own crypto yeah. module. All right. But all I right. like that it's using the compatible API, because all, all this will boil down to, I have more chances to write, I guess this is isomorphic code, code that works without changes on both sides, the server side, the client side. That's a good thing. Yeah, all right, all right. Nice. Not really a surprise. Well, we know Node has workers as well. But you have to import them. They're not API compatible with the web. These are. So it's the same same pattern the web uses. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, well, you see, I did know this one. So I. Not surprise face, but not, I was very happy about this. Because I I much prefer the the streams that the WhatWG standardized over the, the various say, ones that Node has. I just saw a couple of days ago Node now has them as well. Yes, they've been. They've kind of changed their mind on a lot of stuff because they're looking at fetch as well. Mm. So, yeah, it seems that everything is converging on standardized APIs, which is good. That's yes. what standards are for, so we could converge on them. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yes. Okay. So Node has similar things to this now. I think that's, so. That's, that's yeah. We now have a, a event target. Yeah. So Node has that as well. That's good. Oh, do they? Yes. Yes. I did not know that. Yeah, no, you can use signals to remove event listeners and stuff. Fascinating. Now in, in Node, so that's, yeah. Well, maybe I didn't get the order right, but still, it's, no. it's, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> well, yeah, it's based on uh, me having a slightly lopsided knowledge of, of how <laughs> Node and Deno work. But location, that does surprise me. That I surprised didn't know me that as well. One. Nice. Uh, I actually forgot what, how it's actually, but I think it is, it is compatible and it mostly reflects import meta URL. Nice. Um, yeah, excellent. <laughs> well, so, th so this is building up to fetch, right? I, this is where we're going. Yeah, of course. But so, these, are, these are all the prerequisites for, for having a full fetch. Actually, I don't think I have fetch on the list because it, it surprised me very little that fetch was in there. But I found it interesting that the request and response objects are actually fully. So I guess it makes sense with fetch. It has to be. The this, this sort of prerequisites. And oh, so <laughs> Windows on there as well. That, OK, that is surprising. I think that it, is surprising. it's such a little developer experience Why sprinkle. Not? Why if not? it's literally equivalent to global this, what's the harm? Yes. Just to make absolutely. the code work that works on both sides. Uh, hang on. When you um, start a worker, does it have window? I do not know. <laughs> That's what I, that I would be fun. I do not know. OK, anyway. I would have to check that. Um, and that closes the process? Process closed. Yep. Very good. Excellent. Now what do these do? These are basically similar to, to, to the permission request. They're a CLI Mode, command a CLI line variant mobile. of these things. Of course. And, but yeah, like window alert, confirm, and prompt will be synchronous and blocking until huh. the user acknowledges. Like an alert needs to press OK. Confirm, obviously, is a yes, no, or yes, no, cancel, even. And a prompt is type something in. This is fun and exciting. It is. Is, is there more? Uh, a bit more. There is. Oh, uh -huh. well, what's it? Ooh, hang on. Does it persist? Local storage. It does. Oh. Between runs. How, where is that? It, it has, like, if you. Deno, if you run Deno info, it will give you a folder where it stores per origin data. And you have to supply an origin as a command line flag. Otherwise, it fails. So you have to say, OK, I'm pretending to run on the origin, whatever. And then it creates its own little folder. And everything in local storage will go in there. And on the next run, you can read the data back and don't have to worry about file system shenanigans. This is amazing. Is there, is there something more? Do, do I know but, my own slides? <laughs> I don't know. Is there? Oh, there is this, my favorite. Oh. Because not only does it have Navigator, it has Navigator. GPU. And this is straight through to WebGPU. So yeah, I, I've been looking a little bit into WebGPU. I'm not going to get into it. But the, basically, the, the main new thing about WebGPU is not only is it a newer, saner, approachable API, but it decouples the GPU from Canvas. You can yes. use WebGPU just for purely computational purposes. And that's exactly what they're exposing here. And you can, it's experimental, so it's behind an experimental flag. But it's exposed just like it is in the browser. And I ah, that made me happy. That's so good. It's so good. So I, looking at this, I could really see the whole, OK, I, do, I can actually use Dino as a stepping stone to write some code. And I can be fairly confident that it will run on the web as well later on. Or the other way around, if I've written web code, it's quite likely that it will also run in Dino. I can move modules around almost seamlessly. And I'm kind of I'm not even talking about TypeScript much, but you know, Dino can run JavaScript. If it's TypeScript, it will 
strip out the, it will do the type checks and strip out the types. But mm -hmm. in the end, it's just JavaScript. So you can also just import normal JavaScript as well. Nice. And that's really cool. So going back to, to the imports and talking a bit more about standards that we have on the web, these URLs are long and annoying. Wouldn't it be much nicer if I could say something shorter? You know, okay. something it's a bit more easier to remember. How will you do this on the web, Jake? This is exciting. This would be import maps. Does it spot import maps? It's oh support. my god. So basically you can provide an import map as a file. And that I think is is really good. Again, it allows the thing we can really gone in on the web standard stuff. And they keep they keep keeping up with those as well, as far as I can tell. They really keep an eye out for the things that are useful to them. That's... I'm actually now waiting for them to do the newer import type assertions. Mm. Um, because that would solve the how do I get a JSON in? Because currently I think you have to go via reading via the file APIs. Well that stuff's there in uh, V8 now, so could it just work? It should Maybe just work. I haven't checked, but you know, it, and and I love seeing this that they're keeping up with. It, it will also help solidify these standards, testing them out in more scenarios. Um, this is exciting. This is an exciting future for like seeing where Dino and Node like diverge, also, where like, they converge. I also saw the Node people talking about that they actually they they don't necessarily see Dino as a competition. It's a different take on a similar problem space, and mm. they're learning from each other. And I love seeing that. That, and I think maybe that is why they were now starting to look at streams a bit more and starting to ship the what WG streams to Node because it just it just makes sense to be more compatible on that front. Node obviously has the burden of being around for much longer and oh, having yeah. backwards compatibility and all these things. The what WG streams didn't just appear out of nowhere. You're being much better. They learned from the mistakes that yeah. that Node had made over a few iterations of their streams. So yeah, yeah, it's it's great to see sort of. Circle of life. The circle of, streams. of life. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and just as a, as a quick tie up in the end, here's a couple of commands that they can support because they really try to come in with all batteries included. So they have a REPL, you can run a file. Um, they have a pretty printer, they have a test runner and a test framework, they have a coverage tool. Bundle is a bit like parcel, like roll up, in that they just inline all your static imports into one big file, if whether it's standard library or something else. It just makes it one big script. As an optimization step, I guess. Um, What's compile do? Tell me what compile, compile does. Compile is like bundle, but it even bundles Dino itself. So you get one single statically linked binary that contains huh. your script, which I think is probably really interesting for all the, the backend folks who want an easy time deploying something to a function or like a, a, a Docker container. Put this one binary in there. You don't need a base image. It's just that one file. That's very neat. Um, it's still that again. The compile bit is experimental, which yeah, it's it's considered unstable. But I tried it and it worked. That was kind of cool. I obviously didn't use it to to a large in a large project. It's just a, no. a script. But yeah, it's I, I thought it's really cool. It's like That's obviously stupid. the binary is like I don't know seventy megs or something. But at the same time, you know, size on the server side matters less. The ease of deployment could matter more on that front, makes it easier to cache potentially as well or to, to roll back a deployment. I, I could see it really beneficial on, on the back end side for, for folks. Amazing. Uh, yeah, if people want to know more, the website. I, I do. Yeah, well, to go right there. That's the URL. <laughs> yeah, .land is a proper top level domain. Dino.land. And now I would like to see in the comments how often I said Dano, how often I said Dino, <laughs> because I, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> Look Look at the things we we couldn't do before for a whole year. I know. We couldn't cut our fingers off. Now <laughs> yeah. we can. I couldn't tell you where your slide clicker was. It's just, it, it's just oh, everything back to normal. You what? couldn't put a tape measure in my mouth. <laughs> it's, look, I'm, I'm just so glad we're back. <laughs> so glad. I'm sure people have missed this. <laughs>